Hey guys, thanks for stopping by for another wildlife Q&A. Uh, I got a great question from Jason and it's way too long for me to get it correct. So I'm just going to kind of overview it and then I'll read it more because the answer is going to be better if I actually give the answer with a screen recording. He mentioned that in a recent thing I shared online somewhere, I um, had mentioned that cameras often get white balance wrong. And so he was asking about how I deal with that. And so the short answer is um, I shoot raw and adjust everything after the fact. So I don't really have to decide ahead of time what white balance I need and shoot. And I'll talk more about that and show more of that uh, with a screen recording. So thanks for tuning in and I'll get right into that. All right, let's dive into this question from Jason. He says, I recently watched the wildlife inspired session on shorebirds that I did with Scott. At one stage, you said the words along the lines of cameras often get white balance wrong. Then Jason says, so I use auto white balance and correct in post. Or no, wait, that's what I said. <laughs> Here's where Jason says, I must say I've experienced the same thing, especially in low light conditions, which is where I notice it most. He said, I seem to get the magenta color cast on photos taken in certain conditions. He shoots in raw and normally uses auto white balance too. He said, I've been carrying an x ray color checker passport with me, but sometimes it's difficult or inconvenient to use this in a field with a long lens. He has a 500 f4, which has a minimum focus distance of 4.5 meters, and there isn't always a neutral gray item in the photo. I have taken to set the white balance on when doing it in post. I was wondering what techniques you use to color correct, and are there any online tutorials that I could recommend? Um, and he mentions that he is in Australia. So Jason, thanks so much for that question. Um, I have never used a, um, a color checker in the field. Uh, actually, I don't think I've ever used one anywhere by actually photographing it. Uh, sure, that can work well, but uh, in my experience, most images have some kind of neutral color in them, whether it be black, gray, white, you know, um, and if they don't, uh, I'm going to dial it in anyway. So half the time I'm going to use a click white balance in Lightroom or Photoshop or whatever tool you're using. And then I'm going to adjust from there. So here's an example where I see the camera do white balance incorrectly often. And that is when the bird is in shade and the background is in sun. Um, the camera then always just kind of chooses too cool of a white balance on the subject, which is probably somewhere closer to kind of accurate to the scene. Although I have to admit when my eyes view the scene, my eyes are really good at filtering out that blue that you see here. So I'm going to grab the white balance tool, come in here, find an area that's showing some of those blue tones, and then give it a click and see where it goes. And that's pretty good. Although I'll say maybe it's just a little too much. So in this circumstance, I might dial it back just a little bit to something like that. So the advantage of shooting in the shade like this, and I'll show you on the next, next example. Uh, this is the same morning, actually, and I think a little bit before this hoodie came in. Uh, so here's this Canada goose, right? Uh, so I'm just gonna grab the white balance tool, click there. That actually seems really good. That seems really, really good. So uh, I would, however, lighten it up, um, kick the shadows up, and then add some contrast, and then of course, obviously crop out that goose on the right and level it up a little bit. But uh, yeah, something like that would probably do the trick. Um, and then maybe just darken the whole, you know, bottom half if I'm going to really post process this and then kick the highlights up a little. There we go. Uh, so you can see how the color really cleaned up nicely just from that initial click in the white or what should be kind of gray area there. So I think that worked really well. All right. Here's a really weird image. So this is Bufflehead in shade. Um, the background was getting some light, but it was real soft early in the morning. So first off, let's correct the exposure, right? So I'm way dark and I got to push these shadows way up to get the detail in on that buffle head, right? So there we go. But now like this bird is way, way blue. So let's grab the white balance clicker, try a click there. I actually kind of like that one, although there's maybe a little bit too much magenta tones in there. Maybe, you know? Uh, overall, this thing needs some contrasts as well. So let's kick some contrast in there. Uh, this is a funky color image, though. There's a lot going on here. And I mean, if I click the white balance, like watch, I can click all over the place here and get vastly different results. And this is all the white tones of this bird, right? So over and over again, I'll just keep getting something different. Um, so 
in this circumstance, I'll just kind of dial the white balance in where I like it. So maybe a little more magenta, a little more blue, something like that maybe. Um, and then I'll probably actually go to another image and come back to it because, you know, my eyes, as I'm looking at this, kind of adjust to what I'm seeing and become more accepting of it. And then if I jump to another image, especially something like crazy different color like that, and then let my eyes adjust to this and look at this image for a while, then come back to this. Now this looks really clean color. Actually, it doesn't look that bad to me. Whereas just a little bit ago, it looked like there was a lot of rainbow of colors going on there. I mean, there's still, you know, magenta, cyan, more kind of bluish magenta up there. Um, so there's a lot going on there. Uh, here's another example of the camera picking the totally wrong white balance. So uh, these Phragmites were just like a nice warm brown when I saw them that morning. Uh, or evening, I forget which, but I was shooting into this like sunny bokeh coming through the trees. And I think some of that light was hitting the sensor and just threw the white balance way off. So these are brown. They're not supposed to be gray. So there's not necessarily anything in here that I would click white balance on, but I just know, you know, like, Hey, there we go. That's where it's supposed to look, uh, obviously lighten it up, add the contrast. And then, you know, I get that nice, rich golden tone in the background. Um, and at this point for something like this, I'm going full artistic. Like it doesn't matter if I were to click this on here, it might actually, yeah, there we go. You know what? That's probably more true to the realistic, accurate color. Uh, but for me, I don't really care about that. That looks better. <laughs> um, I shouldn't say I don't care. Uh, that's not the most important thing to me is that it be a hundred percent accurate to real life. I want it to resemble real life. Like for example, I'm not going to, I mean, I could do something like this and, and go really artistic with it and then kick the saturation net. Right. So this could be like, Oh look, it was shot in like moonlight or something. Like I could really do something like that if I wanted, but I want it to be true to the scene, but better, you know, I'm going to put my own artistic interpretation on that. And usually for me, that means going a lot more golden kind of warmer tones. I, I tend to like that. Here's another example. Um, you can see there's a lot of blue going on here. Let's get the contrast up to a good point. So something like that, right? There we go. Um, so there's a lot of blue happening here. Um, the shadows are really getting thrown into blue. And this was strong sun, but there was a kind of a warm tone to it. So in this circumstance, if I were to click white balance on this, way too blue. If I click white balance here, eh, not bad you know, but maybe a little too warm. If I come back here, definitely way too warm. Like that's not real. Uh, so, you know, where do I click in here? You know, if I, even if I did have a gray chart out there, do I put it on the sun side? Do I put it on the shadow side? It's like, who knows, you know? So it's up to me to determine that. So in this circumstance, I'm just going to slide this white balance into here to see where I like it. And I think somewhere in there looks pretty good. The overall warmth is good. I still have some blue tone. Now for me, if I'm going to edit this, I'm going to go and post in Photoshop and actually make all the sky and water much more blue. Like I want the water and the sky to be more like that tone, right? But I don't want the bird to catch all that blue. And in fact, I want to ditch and desaturate some of the blue back there. So I'm going to do what I just did here quickly in Photoshop in a much more detailed manner. So that's how I would adjust the white balance on that. And then here's another example of the shade. So again, I'll grab the white balance clicker, come up into the blue here, kind of shift that a little bit more to the warm, you know, get a nice crop. Let's get rid of this annoying little stick there. Just kind of clone that bad boy out. Try not to repeat the pattern as much. There we go. And then, um, you know, maybe lighten up the shadows, give me more detail. And now that I look at it, I think I went a little, a little too magenta. So let me shift it green a little bit. That seems more accurate to the scene, right? So is this accurate to if I were to have a gray card out there and click on it? I don't know, but this is kind of how I remember that scene looking. Um, and this also looks pleasing to my eye now. So, uh, you know, that's kind of how I adjust things. This is how I do all of my editing. It's more by eye than by the numbers. I've always been that way, both with my white balance and with my exposure. You know, like if I, I, I never look at a histogram cause I don't care what this histogram says at all. Like it just does not matter to me. Like that's my histogram here. Okay, great. Uh, doesn't mean anything to me. I know what the histogram means. I just 
don't care what the histogram shows. I care what the image looks like, you know? So for me, if I needed to adjust this, you know, more, you know, like bring the blacks back down to get my histogram in there a little bit better. And then maybe I'm supposed to bring my whites up to get my white area there a little bit better. Um, is that technically better on the histogram? Maybe, but it looks too contrasty to me. So I'm going to stick with the image right here. Um, you know, let's see a histogram on this image. Okay. So this is spread out a little bit more evenly, but look, there's like a big chunk missing on the highlights there. So I should probably push my highlights up to there. But to me, that looks a little hot on this right now. You know, I don't really particularly like that. So maybe that's a right contrast on the whole image. But now I need to, you know, do something about recovering those highlights right in there like that. So they're not overexposed, you know, and now again, my little white point in the histogram isn't it's not hitting the total end there so you know for me the histogram what the white balance says using a gray card all that is by the numbers and by the numbers to me takes some of the fun out of the artistic side of wildlife photography or any photography for that matter um so that's just my take on it you know there's some people that do everything by the numbers and have amazing results so you know if that's what you like if that's your kind of if that's your interpretation of wildlife photography and that's how your approach works for you, then stick with it by all means. Don't change what you're doing just because this is what I like. But uh, if you're curious to know how I approach it, well, now you've seen it. So uh, thanks so much for that great question. That was a lot of fun. And I hope you guys got something from this. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope that answered your question, Jason. And I appreciate you sending it in. Anybody else, if you have any good questions, send them in either in the comments here or shoot me an email through my website. Contact me any way you'd like and send some questions in. I love doing these answers. It's a lot of fun. Thanks so much for submitting questions. And if you have a question you'd like to ask me about wildlife photography, hop on over to my website at rayhennessy.com and submit the question there. And I might just choose it for a future episode. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you like everything I've been sharing here. And I share a ton of other stuff on my website blog posts, articles, other instructional videos that aren't even available on this YouTube channel. You can also subscribe to the email list on my website to get exclusive tips, tricks, and offers. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll have more to share again soon.